In this final video tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can add these brown meteors to our game. Uh, they, all, they, all they do is basically fall from the sky and they can take some lives of us if they hit us like so. Okay, they, as I said, they can be shot, but they are worth no points. Okay, they're just there as a bit of an obstacle to try and uh, make it a bit harder for us to get points and shoot the other enemies. Alright, so I'll just stop that code from running and let's try and get some meteors into our game. Okay, over in Scratch, you should have opened your project that we've been working on over the past few tutorials. Final thing we need to do is bring in our Meteor Sprite. So if you're in my class, I'll give you access to the sprites. Alternatively, if you're watching on YouTube, just check out the link in the description below. Now we are going to hit the Choose a Sprite button here and go to Upload Sprite. And we're going to select the Meteor from our accounts. Comes in absolutely massive, so I want you to drop its size from 100% to 10% at a much more reasonable size now. Now like we have done with the bullets and the other enemies, we're not going to have the original Meteor Sprite falling out of the sky. What we're going to do is we're going to hide this original Sprite and then create clones of it to fall down throughout the game. Okay, so to do that we are going to need to go to our Events tab first of all and bring in when the green flag is clicked. So when our game is started, simply want to hide the Meteor. Okay, once we have hidden it, we are then able to create a clone of it. So I just create a clone of myself. Now, I don't want this clone of the Meteor to appear straight away in my game. I want it to wait a few seconds. So I'm going to go to the top of the control tab and instead of waiting one second, I'm going to get the computer to pick randomly between two and four seconds. So every two to four seconds in our game, we're going to have a Meteor fall from the sky. Okay, a new clone is created every two to four seconds. Uh, just to make sure that this code is always running throughout our game, so we keep getting new meteors, we're going to have to go to the control tab and wrap those last two blocks of code up in a forever loop. So these two lines of code just keep looping over and over again um, throughout our game. Okay, so that's the first part done. Now what I want to do is code up the clones and tell them to fall from the sky. So we're going to need to go to the bottom of our control tab and drag out when I start as a clone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to go to some X and Y coordinates. Okay, now like we've done before, this meteor can start anywhere on the X axis within our game screen. So I'm just going to go and get it, the computer to randomly pick somewhere between minus 200 and 200 on the x-axis for that meteor to start and for the y value I want to start just above the top of the stage so I'm going to change it to about 200 for the y value. Once we're in position we can go back to our looks and we can show this clone so we can actually see it and then we just have to tell it using a repeat until loop to fall down the page. Okay, so I'm going to go to Operators and choose the less than symbol. Back in Motion, we need to check the Y position. So we're going to keep repeating some movement code while the Y position is um, greater than 180. Okay, once it gets lower than minus 180, which is just below the bottom of the screen here, okay, we're going to delete that uh, Meteor. So just in Control. Delete this clone, we'll go down here. Now we just need to put in here how we want that Meteor to move. In Motion, I'm going to choose Change Y. So I'm going to change its Y value by minus 4. So it's going to fall down the page at a speed of minus 4. Okay, if we had positive 4, it would be going up the page. Negative 4 will bring it down the page. Let's just have a quick look at that and see if we get a Meteor falling down the page and disappearing when it hits the bottom. Okay, it doesn't quite disappear when it hits the bottom of the page. So what we'll need to do is adjust this minus 180, maybe minus 175. That should get it. So let's watch. Yeah, that's better. That's got it. So we just needed to make sure that that Y position, um, once it hits minus 175, then we just delete it. Okay, so that's looking good. We've got our meteor falling out of the sky. Now we need to tell it what to do once it hits our spaceship. 
Okay, it's just like one of our enemies. It's just going to take a life off us or a bar of health. So in control, when I start as a clone, it's just an if then statement. So we need to look at sensing. If the meteor is touching the spaceship, spaceship we're going to play the sound of lose, which we haven't loaded in yet. We've been doing this all through our game though. You know the sound. You know the drill, we delete the first part of it, and we delete the end of it there until we're left with that sound. So we can start sound lose once the meteor hits our spaceship. And we're also going to delete that clone. Okay, um, what else do we need to do? Oh, that's right, we've got to take a life off. So back in our variables here, change should come in there change our lives by minus one okay and that just needs to be wrapped up in a forever loop so the computer is always listening out for when the meteor touches our spaceship so in control wrap that section of code up in a forever loop okay so that's just saying when the meteor hits the spaceship we play a sound that we've been hit we take one off our health bar or one of our lives away and then we delete the meteor Let's have a look. Let's get hit by the meteor. Okay, that's working perfectly. The other thing we want to be able to do is we want to be able to shoot the meteor. Okay, we're not going to get any points for it, but we do want to be able to shoot them out of the sky. So let's bring in, actually, now we'll do when I start as a clone again. And it's going to be another if then statement. We need to be dissensing to see if. We are touching the bullet. So if the meteor and the bullet are touching, okay, we're going to start a sound. Again, we need to load in the sound zoop. And we're going to start that sound. So we start the sound zoop and simply delete the clone then. So we delete the meteor. Again, this needs to be wrapped up in a forever loop. So the computer is always listening out for when the meteor and the bullet collide with one another, then we can run those two lines of code. So let's just put a forever loop around all of that. So let's test it and we'll see if we can shoot a meteor. Perfect. The other thing I want to happen is I want the bullet to disappear as soon as it hits the meteor. So over on our bullets here, it's this section of code down the bottom here that says if touching enemy one or enemy two, Let's take out enemy two for a sec. We're going to have to drop in another ore. It's going to be touching enemy two. Or if the bullet is touching the meteor. There it is there. So if um, our bullet hits enemy one, enemy two, or the meteor, and we just delete whatever it is we've hit. So let's see if that works. Remember there's a bit of a glitch with this in Scratch. It won't always delete. It looks like it's working. So that's good. It's doing what I want. Okay, so that's about it for the Meteor. Okay, the last thing we have to do now is just tidy up a few loose ends. And the only thing I really want to change is our Enemy 1 here. Instead of making it appear every 3 seconds, I'm going to get it to appear randomly. Every, let's say, three to six seconds. Okay, so they don't always appear on cue. There's going to be a little bit of a gap, um, a random gap between each red guy appearing on the page. Um, I think we are all good now, so I'll just zoom back. He's all good, he's all good. So let's just have one final crack at our game to make sure everything's working. So we should be able to shoot everything. Okay, that's all looking good. We should be able to get hit by everything too and lose a life. So let's try and get hit. Meteor. Red guy. And green guy. It says game over. Our health has all run out and you can see our final score. Okay, so I think we are done. That is how you create a fairly simple space shooter game in Scratch. Uh, there's a whole heap of other things that you could add to this in your own time, but for now, hopefully this has shown you a few basic skills in Scratch, and you can run with this from here.
to make your own games.